There are uh, also some additional laws above these basic ones. The fifth one being, if you've got a couple of polynomials, p of x and q of x are polynomial, then two things happen. First, p of x is continuous. All polynomial functions are continuous. And secondly, a polynomial function divided by another polynomial function is continuous is continuous as long as as long as at the point x equals c the denominator doesn't equal to zero the next one is if you have any function of the form y equals x to the power of 1 over n, that will also always be continuous. And it'll be continuous for any x that is a natural number. And a natural number is a number that's a counting number. 1, 2, 3. The next law is that both sine and cosine are always continuous. You should know that from the graphs. If you have an exponential function, it will be continuous. as long as your base is bigger than 0 and your base isn't 1. So fractional base is above 0 and any base above 1. And of course the inverses of those the log functions of base b are also continuous as long as your domain is bigger than 0, your base is bigger than 0, and your base doesn't equal to 1. Speaking of inverses, rule 10 has to do with inverses. If you have uh, a continuous function, and it's continuous on an interval, We'll call that interval i, so a certain domain that it is continuous on. Um, and that domain has some range, r. And if the inverse does actually exist, then when you calculate the inverse, or take a look at that inverse function, it will be continuous. And it will have a domain of r. As the x's and the y's switch, the domain and range switches. Rule number 11 is if g is a function and it is continuous, point x equals c and f is a function and it is continuous at some point specifically g of c then the composition of those two functions which is f of g of x is continuous at that point. And finally, any function constructed 
from any of these laws is continuous. Phew. Okay, let's take a look at an example. If I've got some function sine of 3 to the power of x minus cos of x squared plus 1 all divided by x plus 3, and I give a condition that x cannot be negative 3. Let's take a look at the continuity of the rest of the graph. Obviously, x can't be negative 3, but let's take a look at the rest of the graph. If I start with a basic function that's just sine x, the way that I get f of x is by doing a substitution using the composition of functions. So I've got another function that I'm substituting in. Uh, that other function is 3 to the x minus cos x squared plus 1, all divided by x plus 3. And I'm calculating g of h of x when I calculate sine of 3 to the power of x minus cos x squared plus 1, all divided by x plus 3. That's how you can see f of x as a composition of functions. And likewise, h of x is a composition of functions. It's got one function as a numerator, one function as a denominator. The denominator exists because we aren't considering the point. x is equal to negative 3, and it's polynomial. The numerator also exists. It is adding and subtracting two parts that exist. This part exists, and cosine exists. And this is another composition of functions inside the cosine. So I'm taking this h of x apart, seeing if it exists. It seems to exist at all of those parts. And then I look back at the sine of x function, and we know that sine always exists. So f of x will be continuous as long as x doesn't equal negative 3, which we stated at the beginning. Another neat thing that happens is that if our function is continuous at point x equals c, we can use something known as the substitution method. To evaluate the limit at x equals c. This means as long as it's continuous at x equals c, we don't need to use the tables uh, to evaluate limits. Let's take a look at one example of this. If I've got the limit as x approaches 1 of 3 to the x minus 1 over 2x squared plus 5. First, let's take a look at the continuity of this part. The numerator is a 3 to the x graph with a substitution. x has been replaced by x minus 1, so that's a composition of functions. That's OK. They're both continuous. And the denominator is a polynomial. Therefore, it's continuous as long as it doesn't equal to 0. Well, at x is equal to 1, it's equal to 1 squared times 2 plus 5, 7. So it's continuous. As long as that's true, I can use the substitution method and simply take the negative 1, or sorry, the positive 1, and substitute it in and evaluate the limit. So let's do that. It's 3 to the 1 minus 1 over 2 times 1 squared plus 5. 3 to the 0 is 1 and I calculated this before as 7, and the limit as x approaches 1, we don't need a table anymore. We can actually use an algebraic approach as long as it's continuous at that point. By using the substitution method, we find that the limit is 1 over 7.